Hi, this is Sieg Schmalz, Applications Engineer at Microchip Technology. In this video, we are going to describe how to measure phase noise. To do this, we need a piece of lab equipment that measures in the phase domain, not the traditional spectrum analyzer voltage domain. We call this a phase noise analyzer. A spectrum analyzer can display a carrier clock with noise or modulation quantified as dBm voltage domain power that is spread around the ideal center carrier frequency. Another way to display this is using a power spectral density plot, as we discussed in the previous videos, with units of dBm per hertz. Now let's move over to the phase domain. We use a piece of equipment called a phase noise analyzer to display a carrier clock with noise or modulation quantified as dBc per hertz phase domain power spectral density that is not at the ideal center carrier frequency. Because noise power is symmetrical, with the density curve on one side of the carrier being identical to the curve on the other side, phase noise analyzers show only a one-sided Fourier transform of the phase noise. Furthermore, unlike a voltage domain spectrum analyzer, the ideal carrier clock frequency is subtracted and it is normalized to be zero hertz on the x-axis. All of the non-ideal spectral phase noise component frequencies are displayed in terms of their offset from the carrier frequency, as we see here. For example, a phase noise Fourier component that is 1 megahertz plus 1 kilohertz is displayed at the same location on the frequency x-axis of a phase noise analyzer as a phase noise component that is 1 gigahertz plus 1 kilohertz. In both cases, the phase noise is normalized. It is displayed as its offset from the carrier, irrespective of what the carrier frequency is. We therefore call these blue bar peaks on a phase noise plot the phase noise at a certain frequency offset. Here we see a phase noise plot from a 100 megahertz clock displayed on a phase noise analyzer. It may be a little difficult to see in this image, but the y-axis is dBc per hertz, as we have learned it should be, and the x-axis is the frequency offset from zero. Instead of the blue bars I showed you in the previous graphic, this plot connects the phase noise values with its yellow line. Sometimes devices such as FIES will specify a phase noise mask of the input clock that must be met so that the device will function properly. This mask is a set of phase noise spectral density power levels that the device input clock must stay below. This phase noise mask is specified in the phase domain the way a phase noise analyzer would display it. Besides being used to determine whether a mask requirement is met, phase noise measurements can also be used to calculate clock jitter. But before we explore that topic, we first need to dig deeper into what is called time interval error, which is the topic of the next video.